Thanks, everyone, so much for coming. This is uh, very exciting to have everyone in person. I know all of us have um, either enjoyed or suffered through about a year and a half of remote conferences, remote conversations, and so forth. And so I was very excited to um, organize this with the um, help of the Collegium Helveticum and GTA of ETH, uh, put together this conference that really reflects um, interests that have developed of mind through, in part through my research, uh, but also through teaching. And I'm thrilled to have um, a room full of artists, architects, historians, uh, doctors, my colleagues at the Collegium, it, uh, really a mixed group. And part of my intention was to kind of uh, bring people together in the same room who might not otherwise be in the same room. Um, the theme, in many ways, uh, reflects of observational drawing between science and the arts, uh, reflects my, where I come from, my own situation intellectually, which is uh, thinking about um, many topics from a Renaissance point of view. And so the most, the obvious point of reference um, for our conversations today from my point of view is very much Leonardo da Vinci. Um, and do you think it's possible to lower the lights a little bit? Sorry. Uh, no, not possible. Okay. Um, so, his, which is drawings which you can see in a somewhat faded way here. Um, and uh, Leonardo, I think, is very interesting to talk to students about because, in a course for in particular that I talk, um, that I teach on the science of art and the art of science, because they want to claim him in one direction or the other. They want to say Leonardo is an engineer. Uh, Leonardo is a um, was a proto scientist. Uh, Leonardo was an artist, depending on their own background. And part of the kind of uh, basis of our conversations today, I think, is that none of these things are, are correct. These were absolutely over lapping categories. Um, my other point of view, um, and having dinner uh, with some of the outside speakers last night, we came up, well, this is an interesting mix with, we have an architecture session, botany, and medicine, and there are particularly the architecture, how does that fit in? And of course, um, I'm an architectural historian, this is central to what I do, and over the last 20 years, really, I've, I've um, been working on architectural drawings from two points of view, uh, one in relation to Michelangelo and the idea of drawing as a form of invention, and the other um, a book coming out um, later this uh, month, Giuliano da Sangallo and the Ruins of Rome and the idea of drawing as a way of seeing, a way of seeing the past. Um, and just to frame the architecture session, one comment that I made to um, my, my colleagues um, at, at ETH was that uh, we all recognize within the architecture, um, in architectural teaching and the profession how, how much the profession has changed in terms of uh, techniques and modes of working in the last 20 years. But what seems to have been most preserved is a notion of drawing as a means of coming up with an idea, a kind of lightning bolt moment in which um, you, you have this new, this new thought. What seems much more at risk to me is the idea that drawing is also a way of, of going out into the world, of observing things, of seeing, and of knowing through seeing, thinking through seeing. And that's what I wanted to um, focus on, and I'm delighted to have um, my three guests, Aneta Spiro, Jan de Wilde, and Momoyoka Jimi, uh, with me to talk about this because of these, from, we'll hear more, but from what I understand, these aspects are quite central to their way of teaching and thinking as well. Um, so with that, I will turn it over to them, and we'll begin with um, Aneta Spiro's presentation. And I'm just going to say, oh, I'll hand out the little sheets. I'm basically, to kind of keep time on discussion, I'm not introducing individual speakers. Um, you have their um, short bios in the uh, um, handouts, which I will now present. Mm -hmm. 